I've got my phoneless query up where I have my employee's last name, first name, and their phone extension. And instead of printing it off as is, I want to create a report based upon this query because I can organize my report. And I'm thinking of it in one of two ways. One is that if I print this off as is, you can imagine if you had hundreds to thousands of employees, it would print this query off on the left-hand side of each page, wasting all the space over in the middle and the right-hand side of every page. However, in reports, I can set up columns, like two columns because I don't have that much data here. So when it goes down to the bottom of page one, instead of continuing on to the top of page two and wasting all that space, I could say, wait a second, come up here into the second column on page one. And then second of all, I can group these employees by the first letter of their last name and have a label for each group like, you know, A in bold or red, and then have all the employees whose first letter in their last name begins with A grouped under that label and then B, C's, and so on. Sound nifty? Of course it does. Let's go ahead and close out and come up here, click on the Create tab so we can create a report by design. Click on Report Design. And then we need to bring up the property sheet for the entire report. So we can just come over here in a gray area, double click really fast. There's the property sheet. On the Alt tab in the record source, we're looking for our phone list query. So let's click on the drop down arrow and say the source of the records for this report is the phone list. Great. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Now let's add a title for our report here. So let me click and drag up at the top of the detail bar and move it down. So I got some spacage here. Then on the Design tab in the Controls group, let's add our Label Control. Click on that, and then click and drag it, yay big, and then go ahead and type in the name of your report. And then hit Enter, and that's kind of tiny, so let's do some formatage. Come up here, click on the Format tab, and we'll change the font type to Mono, something very fancy, Mono Type Corsiva, hit Enter, and well, we got to make it bigger than that, so click on the drop down arrow, I don't know, 28. Oh, it's getting there. I mean, we're big, bad, bold, and beautiful. Okay, and then how about the color? Well, it's Dreamforce. We go with the blue theme here, so something blue. Ah, it's getting better. Let me hover over the right middle resizing handle until I can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. Click and drag, drag, and then double click really fast to do a best fit. Then hover over the border and click and drag it. I think right there is pretty good. Next, I want to be able to add the first name and last name of the employees, but remember, in the phone list, it has them separated. So instead of adding two fields, like the last name and then their first name field, I can go ahead and do a custom field where it combines their last name and puts a comma and then their first name. Let me show you. Let's come up here, click on the Design tab. Go to the Controls group, click on Controls, do the AB text box thing, click to add it. Let's get rid of the label. And then the Unbound text box, click and drag that. We'll put that in the upper left-hand corner here, and then we'll add an expression. Let's go ahead and double-click on it to bring up the property sheet, and come over here on the Alt tab in the Controls source, and you can either type it in or click on the Build button to build the expression, whatever works best for you. In fact, let me just right-click and zoom in and you can type it in there, but what I like doing is I like typing it in in the control source or in the build because when I do that, access helps me out. For example, when I come in here, hit the equals, and I do last, and it starts bringing up, well, let me hit the backspace, the different options that I can choose from, the least of which is the actual last name field. So since it's there, if I just arrow down and hit the tab key, then it automatically puts it in for me. But I don't have that option. Let me hit the backspace key. When I right click and zoom in on it, I have to just type it out. I don't get the little prompts. And of course, you also get it when you click on the build button. When you type in equals last, see, it prompts. So you can go ahead and double click on that to add it or arrow down to select it and hit the tab key. In any case, last, since we're here, let's do ampersand and then open quotes, comma, space, close quotes, ampersand, and then do open square bracket. Well, actually, you don't have to do that. You can just type in first because, let me arrow down, I'm going to find the first name field that's right there, hit the tab key, and it adds square brackets for me. So this is what it's doing. It's doing what's called a concatenate, where it's going to be combining the last name and the first name together. That's what the ampersands do. So last name, then after that the ampersand, so I can combine it with the first name. It's got the ampersand before that, but in between it, because I don't want them squished and slammed right together, 
I've got a comma separating them, not just a comma in between the quotes, but a comma space. So it's not last comma first, it's last comma space first. And let's go ahead and click okie dokie and hit the enter key. And then let's see what it looks like. In fact, before I go ahead and go to the print preview, we may want to go ahead and close up the space because if I go right now, right click to print preview, well, there's max, but then I have to scroll all the way down because I have all that gap before I hit the next record. Oh, great. That's quite the gappage. And that ain't working for me. So let's right click, go to the design view, and collapse this by hovering over the page footer bar, the top of it, until I can see arrows pointing up and down, and click and drag it up until we get super squished up there. Well, maybe not too close just yet because I want to be able to add their extension. So if I come up here on the Design tab to the Tools group and click on Add Existing Fields, we got our extension, right? Double click. Okay, see, so just messed it up for me. But that's all right. Let's go ahead and click and drag that up here and click on the label. You can keep it, but I'm going to delete it. And click and drag and move the extension and put it right about there. And then drag the top of the page footer so it's snug, so it doesn't have that much to go. So when it goes from one record to the next, it doesn't have this big gapage here. So when I right click and go to the print preview, they're all one right next to the other. So I don't have to, you know, this is on page one max, page two is Harry, page three is Sherry. I mean, if it works for you, hey, that's just the way you roll. So for me, it doesn't. Let's go ahead and right click, go back to the design view and do a little bit more work here. Where next, I want to go ahead and group these together by the first letter of their last name. So all the A's are together, the B's, the C's. And to do that, let's come up here on the Design tab to the Grouping and Totals group and click on Group and Sort, and then come down here and click on Add a Group. Now, I want to group it by the first letter of their last name, not just, well, their last name here. So what I can do is I can come down here and click on Expression, and here's what I'm going to write. Equals left, and it's going to be the left function, so not the left name, but you see the FX, there's left function, arrow down, and it says returns a variant of type string containing a specified number of characters from the left side of a string. And that string is going to be a field, and it's going to be the last name field. And it's going to return a number that we specify from the left hand side, which is going to be the first character of the last name. And if it's Appleman, it's going to be the letter A. So you can learn more about my functions. We cover the left function in my Excel training video, and a lot of other functions that work with the left function, also the right function. In any case, Watch the training videos there if you want to learn more about functions. I'm just hitting a few to kind of help us along with access here, and in this case, our report. So with it highlighted, hit the tab key, then it says, okay, what's the string? Well, the string that we're looking at is going to be the field, last name. So type in L-A-S, and there it is. With it highlighted, hit the tab key, and it puts square brackets around it. So that's the last name field, and then you can see in the syntax, string, and then the length, comma, the length is now in bold, so we'll type in 1 because we want to pull in the first letter, the length of that field, the first letter, just one character, which is going to start over on the left-hand side, hence the left function. So the first letter in the last name, go ahead and close the parentheses, and that's it. And then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and copy that, and I'll explain why in just a minute because I don't want to retype it. In any case, let's go ahead and click okie dokie. Now we've got our group field here that it's going to group everybody's last name by the first letter in their last name and let's come up here and see if it works right click go to the print preview and hey a is for apple and b is for bally bailey in any case we got them all grouped together a b c's and so on which is nice but hey how about if we do something a little bit more fanciful how about if we add like a header for each of these groups like if it's for the a's a big a here and a b for the b's and so on Okay, you convinced me. Let's go ahead and right click, go to the design view. And what we need to do is add a text box here because that's what it's grouping by, where we can say, hey, go ahead and pull the first letter of the last name that will represent that group. So you kind of see where I'm going with copying that function. Well, let's come up here in the controls and go with our text box and click here. Delete the label. There's our unbound. Let's squish it over here. I don't know, actually let's squish it down here and drag the top of the detail section and bring this down below. So we'll have all the spacing before it hits the next group. Otherwise, if I made it super tight, you just have the letter here, then the record, then the next group with its letter, then the record, but I want a little bit of before space of each group. 
So with it unbound, we want to bring up the property sheet for it, or you can just come in here and just type in the function, but we pasted it, so let's do control V as in Victor to paste it. So it's going to pull in the first letter of the last name beginning over on the left hand side. That's the whole expression right there. Let's go ahead and hit enter on the keyboard and see if it works. Right click on the tab, go to the print preview. Hey, looky there. There's A for Apple and B's for the B's and C's and so on. Now let's see, let's click on it to zoom out. How many pages do I have? Because it's on the left hand side and when it gets down to the bottom, let's go ahead and click and go over and yeah, it goes on to the second page and I'm wasting all the space over in the middle and the right hand side. Well, I don't have that much to take up the third column here, but just enough to get into the second column. So what I want to do, and not only that, but look at that, the S is being cut off and then the rest of the group underneath the S is on the next page. Let's do a couple of things. Let's right click and go to the design view and let's expand by clicking on more for the group. And it says, do not keep group together on one page. Yes, let's go ahead and keep the whole group together on one page. So it doesn't break them up at the bottom where we get a widow or an orphan, depending upon if you're looking at the bottom of the page or the top of the next. So let's go ahead and right click. And I cover that in my word training videos, the widow or orphan definitions. But let's go ahead and go to the print preview. So down at the bottom of page one, I don't know if you saw it, but the S, the label was able to squeeze there, but not the rest of the record. So instead, keeping the groups together, click on it to zoom out, click on it to zoom up at the top. There we go. Now I'll put the label up at the top because it's got to keep everybody together because they're a family. But long story short, an orphan is when you have the first line of a paragraph, that's in Word, at the bottom of a page, and everybody else is at the top of the next, that's an orphan. Or a widow is just the opposite, where you have everybody else at the bottom of one page, and on the next page, up at the top, you just have one, and that's a widow. And so in this case, we had an orphan, just the S that was by itself at the bottom of the first page, and the rest of the group was at the top of the next. So now that that's fixed, let's stay in here in the print preview because on the page layout tab, we can go to the page setup and let's go to the columns here because right now we just got one. So let's go ahead and do three and let's see, hit the tab key, column spacing, spacing in between the columns here. We're only going to have two. I know I put three, but I only have enough data to put in two. But nonetheless, I'm showing you that, you know, you can put as many columns as you want. Just make sure it all fits. And then down below, the column size, the width, is defaulted to 6. Oh, that's too huge. So in order to change it, I have to uncheck, same as detail. And then I can go ahead and say 2 inches. Because I think that's about the size of these guys right here, about, yeah, 2 inches. And if I need to, I can tweak it. And then how do I want the column layout? Well, it's got to be down, and then across, and then down, then across, and down. So that looks good. Click okie dokie and then, hey, there we go. How many pages do I have? Can't click over, so it's all on one page. So instead of going to the top of the next page, the S and W groups, it's now in the second column. And if I need to, I can give it more column spacing in between the columns to kind of give them some more elbow room. And then finally, aesthetically, it doesn't look all that great, right? Because we've got these lines around these boxes. We have these alternating row colors. Oh, it's just such a mess. Let's go ahead and right click, go to the design view. Well, I'm fussed, and let's go ahead and close out of here. Yeah, we can close out of that. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and hold down the control key and click on all the other boxes here, because then we can come up and click on the format tab and save for the outline. For me, I want to make it transparent. So when I right click and go to the print preview, okay, looking better, but the alternating row colors kind of Especially when you got this other column, it kind of throws me off. So let's get rid of that. Not only for the details, the records, but also for the group header, the labels. Right click, go to the design view. So to do that, we just need to bring up the property sheet for, first of all, the details. Double click on the bar there really quick. Then come over here on the Alt tab. And let's change the alternate back color. Click in that box there. Click on the build button and say no color. And then we want to do it, or I do, for the group here and let's come over here and click on that to make that no color and if i'm talking too softly it's because i carry a big stick let's go ahead and right click and go to the print preview hey it's getting better isn't it cool now let's go ahead and make these a little bit more stand outish the labels for each group and right click go to the design view and go ahead and select the box come up here click on the format tab make it bold and beautiful and maybe red 
really give it some poppage and maybe increase the font size. And let's try it now. Right click, go to the print preview. Not too bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.